read it out, and then you'll look at me, and you'll answer. Okay. It just spilled out everywhere. And in the back of my head, I'm like, you're not doing any of that, darling. <laughs> When I started my PhD, my children were very young. That, you know, you go through uncertain times and so on. You know, I wasn't the most amazing teacher. Hi. <laughs> my name is Frida Werdiger, doctor. <laughs> I did my PhD in physics, and since then I've become a bit of a medical imaging expert. What did you learn from your PhD that prepared you for life after your PhD? I learned a lot of science, but I think I don't, I don't use a lot of that stuff in my life after PhD. So I think what I really learned in my PhD was how to be analytical. I honestly think that I could solve any problem because I learned how to think really deeply about something and really critically, not just about my own thinking, but other people's work as well. What that means is you can be really honest about where something has weak points and think ahead where you think you might encounter problems and see if you can solve those problems in advance. And that is really what I learned how to do in my PhD. What was the most challenging aspect of the PhD? Just one? <laughs> well, I think that there's this obviously stress and pressure and, you know, there's, that can affect your mental health and I definitely saw that with other students. For me, um, my son was actually born in the second year of my PhD. I remember presenting the end of my first year, my timeline, and nobody knew I was pregnant. And I was like, well, I'm going to do this, and then next year I'll do this. And in the back of my head, I'm like, you're not doing any of that, darling. <laughs> I had no idea how to handle that. I had no one in my personal life who had children and ambitions like mine, and nobody around me at my stage at uni who had children, and very few women that had children. So I was like, I was completely underprepared for how to manage that. I, I should have taken more time off, um, but I didn't. Then in my fourth year, um, my, I had my daughter, but unfortunately she was not born living, my daughter. And um, that, and then by the end of my PhD, I was actually in divorce court. And I think the day before submission, I was literally in divorce court. And so all of that happened throughout my PhD and I was completely unprepared for how to deal with any of that. But all I could really do was sort of reach out to the people around me for support. The people in the Phoenix physics administration um, were incredible. I think I got something like three or four extensions and the graduate research office, like even if I put my extension request in one day before my PhD was due to expire, they'd get it done really quickly. And so, you know, I'm grateful I was treated with a lot of compassion, but I mean, of course, I should have been treated with compassion. I was going through so much. I honestly think that a lot of those things I experienced were only like happening to me and because of the fact that I was female. And I really think, like I think about this a lot, that when a field starts to accommodate women in it, it has to start to accommodate all of those things because there were men that were having babies in their PhD, but it wasn't my experience. I experienced things like with my son that I, I had trouble walking up the stairs and I'd arrive to uni and there'd be nowhere to park and I have to go up and down the stairs. And so I'd call the parking office and I'd say, can't they do something? And I'd say, oh yeah, we can get something special for you. Or like I would express milk for my son at my, in the toilet in the physics building because there was nowhere else to do it. Like these were things I had to experience and of course with my daughter like thinking is this uh, like 
Am I taking leave from grief? Am I taking leave because it's maternity leave? Like all those things I had to think about were things that my supervisors at the administration never had to think about before and we had to be creative about it. Um, and all we could do was our best. And actually it was me, out of everybody in my uh, year, I won the doctoral prize in physics for my work. Um, and so I never gave up and I never compromised on the quality of my work. I just took longer and I slept less. <laughs> and I don't think I've caught up on my sleep yet. <laughs> Next question. What, <laughs> what was missing from your PhD program that would have been helpful in navigating life after PhD? <laughs> okay, this is easy. <laughs> The politics. <laughs> the politics and strategy. There are 1,000 things that I could have thought of that could have put me in a better position, strategized for myself. I was really focused on employment and I think that I just felt like grateful that somebody gave me a job. And also in your employment, there are a lot of strategies that you can use to get ahead and a lot of people strategize. And I wish that I had learned how to implement strategy so that, for example, I wasn't offering help just for fun because I, I love science and I love to help. But I could have structured that help in a way that would have benefited me long-term and wouldn't have allowed people to take advantage of me. And I think I could have had a little bit more self-respect uh, to make things better for myself. What journals should I target? What conferences should I go to? What are the important steps that I need to move my career forward? I wish that I learned a lot of that during my PhD. What advice would you give yourself if you were starting a PhD again? Okay. You can do this however you want. You can take your time. I know that that's like, <gasps> because they tell you things like, five years PhD, you have to hit this goal. Seven years, this goal. You can take as much time as you want and you can do it however you want. That is the advice that I would give myself. <laughs> Such a pleasure.